so this is just a quick review of um, plotting in 3D like we did in class so we can get our buildings um, going. So first is a reminder about the orientation of our three dimensions. Now we have the X and the Y, the horizontal and the vertical plane kind of like sitting against the wall like the chalkboard and the Z plane coming uh, out and also going back here. Um, so the, it, it, we're going to pass three coordinates to uh, Visual Python when we're uh, making these plots. So to begin, we're going to uh, import all of Visual Python here. And then we can start making some basic objects. For example, this canvas is just, we, we need to use this when we're working in the Jupyter Notebook so that it um, redraws things appropriately. But then this box is really the command that we're, uh, we care about. This is going to be a three-dimensional box, um, and this is where it's positioned, at 0, 0, 0. So we'll have a box centered right at the origin here. And when we execute this, sure enough, we get a box. And scrolling in and out, zooms forwards and backwards, and if you hold down the uh, control on a Mac or right-click, you can rotate the object in three dimensions. Um, similarly, you can have multiple objects like a sphere and a box. Uh, again, we'll put these at different locations. So here, this is an X coordinate of one, this is an X coordinate of three. And we added the uh, color argument for this guy. So there's our box and ball. Um, also, we can add some size arguments to these boxes. For example, here, if we make uh, two boxes, both at 6 and negative 6, and add the size argument where we're including the width of them to be 0 0.2, and then the length and the uh, height of them to be 12, we should have two kind of narrow uh, big boxes at 6 and negative 6, and a little ball uh, in between those two at negative five. And sure enough, there's that picture for us. Okay. Um, if we wanted to make this ball move, what we can do is we can update its position um, so, for example, here we have this ball, but um, I know that the position of the ball, I can a just add some sort of change to that every time through a display loop. And I'll, I'll start to see a ball moving. So that ball, until a certain point in time, that ball moved across the screen. Maybe we could see it, maybe we couldn't. We'll do more with this, um, with motion here uh, coming up. But the last important thing is to talk through how we can make a, um, a three-dimensional solid built on top of a 2D function here. Um, so to begin, we're going to use the same kind of parameters that we've used in all of our rebound sum problems. We'll have a starting point. That's this A here. Uh, this is the starting point. We have uh, B. This is the end point. We have N, which is the number of rectangles or uh, whatever kind of geometry and W is the width of those individual pieces. These will be the widths of the slices. Okay, so we still have these same things. So here in this example, I'm using A starting at zero, ending at 10 with 100 uh, rectangles. And then just with those values, we can determine what the width of them uh, are. Next, um, I'm going to have, I'm going to define a function. And here I have this function that involves a sign 
um, that I'm using. So this is just my regular function um, that I'm going to build on top of. And then, again, I have to, just as always when we're plotting, after we define our function, we have to define our domain, the things that we're plugging into that function. So here, we're plugging in a whole bunch of 100 uh, equally spaced numbers between 0 and 10. So this is just creating the domain of the function. And now we're ready to plot um, this function, just as we have before in 2D, except for we're going to be also specifying some things about where we want the heights of these boxes to be in, um, in three dimensions. So uh, to start, let's just consider what happens if I loop through every, what, what I'm doing here is I'm going through this list of x values, this 100, 100 spaced equal values between 0 and 10, and at each of them I want to draw well, first, I'm going to draw uh, points. Okay, I'm just going to draw some points so we can see um, the curves. All right, and when I do that, here we have we have this curve, the sine curve, and I added this other curve so that we could see the uh, axis. Okay, so here is our here is my function. That's my sine curve. And what I want to do is I want to build uh, boxes standing up on these edges here, this whole thing. Okay. To do that, uh, I'm going to ask this also to position a box at each of those x coordinates. And then what I'm doing is telling it where to center these values. So the center is going to be halfway between um, these, this axis and, and the actual graph. So that's where the center of the box will be. And then the height of it, well the height of it, we, we want that to be the same. In this example I'm going to make the rectangle uh, a rectangle that's the same width as height. So this is the width. The height that's going to st stick out towards us I'm going to make be the same thing, okay? So these heights that will be standing up vertically off of this will be the same as um, the width of it. So that's why, again, I have this same value for each of these. Now, in one case, I want to take the absolute value so they're all standing up on the same side uh, of this region, okay? That's all that that is. And then the width of each of those boxes will be determined by this value, the width of the slices, and the length and the um, height, again, are both the same. They're the same as the value of the actual function itself. And so with this code, we should get boxes standing up, forming our, our house as we uh, wanted. And sure enough, that's what happens. And we can see down here, we've got these, you know, at each of these points, we've got a box um, standing up off of that. And we can change things like the parameters. So if I were to change this from um, 0 to 10, instead from uh, negative uh, np pi times 2 to uh, 2 pi. We get a little different, a little bit of a different picture because now it's closed out there at the ends. So now my figure is a little different. Okay. So your job is going to be to um, to just play around with uh, some different functions here and see how the uh, see how you can get your figure to appear. And also feel free to come in here. Um, and change things about the box. Maybe you want to change what color uh, the boxes are. Maybe you want to change something about the points. Maybe you want to change something about the text. Feel free to um, do that. And that's all available at the vPython 
documentation that's linked in the uh, video here, and I, I posted that on Slack also.